There's so much going on in here. It's a little overwhelming. 80 to 90,000 euros for this tank. Pretty much every single clownfish in here is like pretty badly deformed. What is going on right now? I've never seen anything like this before in my entire life. What's up everybody, my name's George, and today we're here in the town of Leinsweiler in the region of Faltz, famous for its vineyards, but today we're actually at a coral farm and we're gonna be seeing one of the most interesting and unique coral farm facilities and methodologies in the world. We're about to go inside and meet the owner, Jürgen Wendell. The owner does not speak English, he only speaks German. 13 Jahre angefangen. Mit Meerwasser Aquarius. We have our translator here, Matthew. Why don't you just debrief the viewers before we head inside what exactly they're about to see? They're about to see one of the craziest breeding systems in Germany, I would say. Jürgen is a little bit odd. Let's say it that way. I think you guys are just going to be absolutely blown away. Let's go take a look inside. Herzlich willkommen. Kommt rein. So get in. <laughs> That's a display tank. How big is this tank? Seven and a half thousand liters. Jürgen doesn't have any filtration system on this system, only a skimmer. And it will go over the overflow into the sump with a skimmer. Just basically, this filter runs all of these systems and the one out there. And the big one. Wow, that's not a lot of filtration. And he feeds one kilo of food every day. All right, so seven and a half thousand liters. Yes. This is full of blue-green chromis. These are probably the biggest chromis I've ever seen in my entire life. Life. They are literally the size of my fist. Then there's a butterfly fish, those angel fish, tons of anemones, some damsels, clownfish, trigger fish. There's a lot going on in here. How many fish are in this tank? Roughly about 200 fish. 200 fish. Where did you get this tank? Who made this? Uh, the company Shuran made it. It was specially made for him. I do want him to raise the thing. Yeah, yeah okay, so you lift it up, you use this little thing, and you just press it. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> this is amazing. It is. Whoa, look at the cowfish. I didn't even see him. How much did it cost to build that? Including lights, about 20,000 euros. What about the whole thing? It's about uh, 80 to 90,000 euros. 80 to 9? 80 to 90,000. 80 to 90,000 euros for this tank? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. That's yeah. boss level. Boss mode. Boss yeah. mode, yeah. yeah. Mit 13 Jahren angefangen mit Meerwasseraquaristik und Korallen haben mich schon immer fasziniert und vor 15 Jahren habe ich den Entschluss gefasst, ich probiere es mit einer professionellen Korallenzucht am Markt mich zu etablieren und das hat letztendlich funktioniert. This is just a display tank. It is, but it will feed the system. So the kilo of food uh, Jürgen puts in the system will feed this tank and the fish. And all these fish will feed the corals from this breeding system over here just by producing the waste out of the kilo of food. You basically want to feed the fish as much as you can to get the nitrates and the phosphates as high as you possibly can because that is the best way to grow your corals. And the tank doesn't get dirty? In the visual way, it won't get dirty, but the dirty will be the nutrients the corals will use. Good. Dirty is good. Dirty is good. Okay. <laughs> All right, cool. I like his confidence. Like, uh, this is his breeding rack for only soft corals. And he says because of his high nutrient level, the corals stay nearly 24 hours constantly with the polyps out because they keep pulling the nutrients out of the water. I'm starting to understand this. It's, it's interesting. It's totally different. I mean, look at the zinnia. They're like growing on the wall of the aquarium. Like, this is... This is nuts. How do you frag a coral like this? Jürgen would just hair them off, and then when he frags them, he will needle them in the stone, and then they would just sort of grow onto the, the coral plug. The colors are good, but the extension and how fluffy they are and the growth is also there. Yeah. But this tank is full. Do you ever sell your coral? So this is like the start of his breeding. So this is where he makes them sort of big. And then in the other system, which we will show you now, that's where they get fragmented and be prepared for sale. Oh my gosh. I don't know if I've ever seen a coral farm with just so much, like literally every inch of space is taken. So 
So this is like Jürgen's showroom. This is Jürgen's first Intensu display tank. And it was built to only for the purpose to be transported. So it has a lid. Now it's just here as a display? Or yes. What is going on right now? Can someone explain to me why I'm seeing a platy in a reef tank? <laughs> Is this possible? These fish live in brackish water, so you can really adapt them over a few days up to salt water level and they will survive. Then the mandarin in there is super fat as well. That's a beautiful mandarin. So this tank uh, is this Euphemia tank. And if you wonder why there's only just one color, it's because this is the only Euphemia that would survive and enjoy its water levels. It's so green, like it's kind of a really interesting green color. The more nutrients, the more happy the algae is, so therefore the more neon green it will get. This is a beautiful aquarium. I mean, this is full of corals, full of anemone. He loves anemones. Like, you, he also really loves this display tank, so you could see how he's smiling. This tank is so full of coral that there's only a few inches of space left for the coral to grow. Why is it like this? Jürgen is very lazy, and every tank he doesn't have to take care of, it's a better tank for him. The fuller it is, the less maintenance it will need, because you have like only one screen to clean instead of three, because the corals are growing along and everything, so it's, it's, it's lazy Jürgen, I think. Hey, that's cool. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. So this tank right here is so full of Xenia, it's covering the entire glass wall of it. These are really nice. This is what I Yeah, it's a lot of chaos, so I did. More anemones over here. You have a lot of anemones. Look, uh, look inside there, look at it. Life. Oh my god! <laughs> look at all these clownfish in here, just chilling. How old are these clownfish? Some of them are over 10 years old. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, these are some old looking clownfish. Oh my god. They look like they're zombies. Yeah, it's got a good friend that breeds an anemone fish. And these are sort of the ones they get. Ah. They, they, they miss out an eye or they miss some film. So Jürgen takes them. But he can use them again to shit in the water. That's amazing in the weirdest way <laughs> it is i guess that these are all the runts of the litter well here now you can see he's packing corals for the customers so this is jürgen's special way of packing them does he sell corals just in germany or all over europe no, all over europe and he will not ship them how does he get them there he will put them in a box like this and then he will just drive to italy he'll drive all over europe to personally deliver his corals yeah it... why because he will never get any complaints about the corals. So now he put the second layer in without any corals. He, he will not leave the space empty. So these are just empty ones with water so they don't move Bro, around. Why doesn't he use a styrofoam or... That's the idea. Why do you do everything yourself? The problem is that every failure that is made, it merkt man ja erst Wochen später, when it's too spät ist. And I want to schon, when was schief geht, the Fehler selbst gemacht haben. So now we're up to see Europe's biggest coral breeding room. What is this place? Oh my god. What's the total water volume of all these systems? He's got 18,000 liters of water. Wow. How many corals are in here? 35,000 corals. 35,000 corals. So, I mean, like, let's just start here. This is a Ganiopora flower pot coral. Yep. It's growing as if it were grass. It's unusual to see it growing in such a shape and way. And look at this here. These are Ganiopora's too. Yes. These are the red ones. Wow. Look how long some of the tentacles extend. Why is it like that? You see this? These are, uh, I would say, fighting tentacles. These are um, the tentacles they use for making space around them when other corals are coming. And then up here, there's all these little... It's a special kind of yeah. monty. Jürgen bought this coral like two months ago. He fragmented it ever since. And these are not for sale until he has a thousand pieces and then he will sell it. Why do you wait until you have 2,000 of the corals before you start to sell them? Because his customers are always buying big amounts. So when he starts off and says, this is his amount, it will be sold out with one order. How many corals are right here? All together 250 pieces. Oh and how long does it take for you to reach 1,000 of these? Up to five to seven years. What? It's cold. Jürgen told me that his customers are sort of very low so they will always secure his amount of corals he produces to take them. Gotcha. Well, how much would he sell 1,000 of these for? 80 euros a piece. 1,000 times 80 is 80,000. Yeah. That's the retail price of yeah. one batch of Just one corals. batch of corals. Yeah, because it's a hobby, of course, what we like to do. And as I've noticed, 
vom Hobby kann man leben, habe ich mein Hobby zum Beruf gemacht. Jürgens Vater hat like a big vineyard and Jürgen had a totally different idea and just said Dad, I don't want to do your wine stuff, I will do corals. So he transformed this wine business into a coral farm? Yes. Wow, this is a Euphelia garden, Montiporas, you got all these Asterina stars, plate corals, little like Aptasia and Mahanos. How do you actually get them out of here? Do you have to like chop them up? All single pieces. So they are all individual, they just look like they're growing together. Wow. All right, down here is an entire field of gold torches, and he has 5,000 of them. So you're sitting on uh, some gold. <laughs> I've never seen so many golden torches in my life. Look at this. So these are the most sold coral for him now, and he's got such high demand on his coral. All the ones you see along here. Yeah. But these are, of course, under T5 lights. Pretty much every single clownfish in here is like pretty badly deformed, tattered and beaten and worn down. Like you can see, you can see their fins are getting stripped away. Even the blue tank. So many fish come out of really bad reef tanks. They were just kept in a really bad condition and he just takes them because he can use them for, for nutrients again. So it's like a sanctuary in here for basically a lot of fish that no one wanted. Oh my goodness, what is he? This is his uh, stock where he breeds from. And they all started off as a small frag. I've never seen anything like this before in my entire life. This man has a Euphelia garden, but these are like trees. This looks like an um, apple tree orchard. That is the correct word. It is an orchard of Euphelias. Like you'd walk through this and be picking apples or something. The entire bottom of this tank is covered in Mahano, which is just extremely interesting. Normally these Mahano anemones are considered pests in yep. a reef tank. Same with the Asterina stars. Why do you have a whole field of them right here? So Jürgen says in his system he doesn't mind them because he has the opinion not to kill any pest which appears in the tank. So for him it works out that they are there, but if he sells a coral, of course he will not sell well, this is like his breeding stock for the next future, so he won't be selling any pests to other customers. Of course, every now and then a sea star could be on there, but just take it off. How old is that fish, that blue tank swimming around? It's from 15 to 20 years, he says, easy. That blue tank? Yeah, ever since he has that fish, it looks like that. But it's a mistake, fish. He regrets it a little bit because he said he had like, in his old business, he had like people coming along, bringing well, nearly dead fish and say, can you take it, can you save it? And he will put it in here, but he can never get it out again. So now people think his system is ill because the fish look not so nice. Mein Schwe also, mir gefallen sehr gut Fische. Das ist mit der Korallensucht natürlich ein Stück weit verloren gegangen. Das halt wieder hier mal ein schönes Schauaquarium. Aber die, die Artenvielfalt bei der Korallen ist schon sehr faszinierend für mich. Dude, this is like a library of coral. There is four stories of aquariums, literally filled to the brim with coral. There are so many leathers. Look at how many stools there are. This entire tank is just full. And the one down below too. He's got a whole farm of the kryptonite candy cane corals. There's so much going on in here, it's a little overwhelming. It almost like gives me anxiety. So this is his Xenia tank, which he uses again like for breeding Xenia. And as you know, they would normally pump. But again, because this high level of nutrients in the water is there, the amount of energy they get from one pump is like a normal Xenia would need with 10 or 20 pumps. So therefore these are lazy Xenias. So that's why they're not pumping so much in this system. Uh, Jürgen just tells me he needs 10 kilos of coral glue every year. But what he says, after fragging through the high nutrients, the death rate is much, much lower than in a normal tank. Because again, the nutrients are so high that the coral, when it's freshly stressed and cut, redo themselves much quicker. Over here we have, we have some like green star polyps, we have yellow polyp, we have this like super cool grafted Montipora. But look at all these fungias. More corals up here. And there's more corals up there. What's up here? These are all closed. Yeah, that, that's nighttime up there. Half the tanks are on, half the tanks are off. Every fish tank has eight hours of lights and the room will never get dark. If he has it in, in variation, the room will always stay in one temperature. Because the light, you can imagine, it's like a sun studio. It's like T5 bulbs. He's got 300 T T5 bulbs inside here. And he said that he can't turn these on for us right now because everything was programmed like 10 years ago. So he's afraid if he will press a button now to turn them on, that the buttons won't work anymore. They're so old, he's worried that he cannot get it off again. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, I don't want to touch anything. Would you consider yourself like a mad scientist? 
Ja, mit Sicherheit, allerdings nicht wissenschaftlich. Also, ja. also einfach, ich habe eine Idee im Kopf und probiere es aus, ob es funktioniert. Und wenn es klappt, perfektioniere ich, bis es halt super läuft. What's going on over here? What is all of this? It, these are trickle filters for the biological parts. So yeah. do you do water changes? Or? So in this system, it does 20% water change every week. You do water change? In this system. Over there, never. This is the skimmer. Yes. And this skimmer is running for all the tanks in the farm. Yes. How do you even make a skimmer this big? It's special made from Shuron for Jürgen. How do you clean it? He doesn't clean it. Just leaves it. Just leaves it. And the only thing he does at the top, there's like a shower. He will turn it on and it will just rinse away. That's it. Wow. Easy. All right. We're going to feed the fish now. Yes. So this must be the biggest fish feeding machine you've ever seen. This is one and a half kilos of frost food. So it's one, two, three, four, five portions a day. So let's the magic happen. So Jürgen will open the valve and now the fish can get the food. That, now it's coming. Look at the top. We just released the food into the tank and now all the fish are out and about feeding. Going to a little frenzy. Here comes a lot more of the food. Look at all those fish. What do you say to people who think these systems and your approach is very different? Ja gut, mir war natürlich klar, aufgrund von der Ausbildung als Winzermeister, man hat nur eine Chance, einen Beruf erfolgreich auszuüben, wenn man es anders macht wie alle anderen. Und das war für mich dann ganz klar, also keiner hat ein Aquarium, so wie ich es mache, von der Denkweise her. Und daher war mir klar, wenn ich es schaffe, dann kann ich es nur schaffen, weil ich alles anders mache wie jeder andere. I mean, I've never seen anything like this in my life. I mean, I've been to a lot of coral farms, I've been to a lot of places around the world and it's unique and it's interesting and it works. So normally at the end of my videos, I say, remember to keep those nitrates low, but I feel like that would be going against pretty much everything in this building. So for the first time ever, I guess keep your nitrates high? Yes. All right, George, out. Our trip across Europe continues. Click here to watch the next video.